All right, how's it going everyone? Thanks for watching this video. This video, of course, is looking at a fifth grade lesson on classifying quadrilaterals based on their properties. Here, of course, we see NC5G3, which is the North Carolina Common Core Standard for classifying quadrilaterals into categories based on their properties. And, of course, you see an ICANN statement right there at the bottom. If you've watched any of the previous videos, I have explained and went through the vocabulary words pertaining to this particular topic. So feel free to go back and watch those previous videos for a better understanding. Um, or you can also just pause this video at any given time so you can jot down this information and get a better understanding of it. <clears throat> but these are some uh, important vocabulary words that are needed to be known for classifying quadrilaterals. So of course we have definitions for a polygon, a quadrilateral, a rectangle, a rhombus, a square, parallelograms, and a trapezoid. And we even discuss what parallel and congruent means. Parallel being the same distance apart and they never the lines never touch. And congruent basically being the same size and shape. So here we, as a quick review, talked about types of quadrilaterals. We have a rectangle, a square, a rhombus, a parallelogram, and a trapezoid. Briefly mentioned uh, in a previous video, as I said, we talked about a uh, quadrilateral club and uh, how within the quadrilateral club, parallelograms, rectangles, rhombi, or rhombus, uh, and squares get into that particular club. And again, I have the words there. But now just a really quick review, as I mentioned, this is your turn. So pause this video and see if you can remember this question and answer it. Or if you're new to this video, see, just pause the, the video for a quick second and see if you can answer this one particular question. Why does a square get to be in three of the clubs? Uh, again, parallelograms, rectangles, rhombus, squares, they all get into the quadrilateral club. But why is it that a square gets to be in a rhombus, a rectangle, and a parallelogram club? All right, well, hopefully you were able to pause this video and be able to answer the question. The answer, of course, the reason a square gets to be in three clubs is because it has two pairs of parallel sides, has four right angles, and has four equal sides. So that is why a square gets to be in all of the clubs. Square is pretty cool. Now we're going to talk about the quadrilateral club, as I mentioned before. And the one shape that uh, uh, was briefly mentioned, but we're going to talk a little bit more about it, is a trapezoid. And keeping in mind, all parallelograms are quadrilaterals because they have four angles and four sides. So we have a trapezoid, and the rule for the trapezoid is a trapezoid must have one pair of parallel sides, while other parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides, a trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides. So the trapezoid is able to get into the quadrilateral club, but it is not a part of the parallelogram club. So let's take a look at some of the quadrilaterals and their angles now. Do keep in mind, all quadrilaterals equal 360 degrees. So first we have a parallelogram, and we're looking at angle A, angle B, C, and D. Side AB, if we put the two angles together, side AB would be parallel and equal to side CD. Side CD in reverse would be equal to AB. We also can say that side AD, if we take those two angles, they would be equal and parallel to BC. And in reverse, BC would be equal to AD. And keep in mind, again, a parallel parallelogram, rather, sorry, has two pairs of parallel sides. Next is a rectangle. We have angle A, B, C, D. Side AB, if we put two, the two angles together, would be equal and parallel to side CD. 
and in reverse, CD would be equal to AB. Also can be said side AD would be equal and parallel to side BC. And in reverse, BC would be equal and parallel to AD. Now with a rectangle, a rectangle has two pairs of parallel sides and each angle is 90 degrees. Next we have a rhombus. A rhombus, of course, angle A, B, C, and D. Side AB would be equal and parallel to side CD. Side CD also in reverse would be equal to AB. We also can say that side AD would be equal to BC. And BC would be equal to AD in parallel. And notice with the rhombus, a rhombus has two pairs of parallel and congruent or also equal sides. And of course we come to the square. We have angle A, B, C, D. We can say side AB again is equal and parallel to CD. And in reverse, side CD would be equal and parallel to AB. We can say side AD would be equal and parallel to BC. And in reverse, BC would be equal and parallel to AD. And again, take a look. A square has two pairs of parallel sides. All sides are congruent or equal. And it has 90 degree angles, more than one. So now it's your turn. At this moment in time, you can pause the video and see if you can answer this quick question. What two shapes have congruent and parallel sides? What two shapes have congruent and parallel sides? All right, hopefully you were able to pause this video and be able to answer this question. The answer, of course, is a square and a rhombus. Both have congruent or equal sides and have parallel sides. So those two shapes have congruent and parallel sides together. Here's another one for you. Which shape that you see there equals 360 degrees? Which of those shapes equals 360 degrees? Again, hopefully you were able to pause this and think about it. The answer, of course, is a square because even though the octagon on the left-hand side is a closed shape, which also means it's a polygon, even though it is closed, it is not a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral has four uh, angles, four sides. Therefore, a quadrilateral equals 360 degrees. Well, I just want to say, of course, thank you for watching. Hope you appreciated this video. Definitely stay tuned for more videos to come. And see you next time.